Hey guys, MNBreno5 here, and today we're going to be doing a first look at the Central Pneumatic 8-gallon oil lubricated air compressor. This is the Harbor Freight uh, air compressor that I just bought today, and I'm going to do a little assembly off camera, and then we will, you know, test it out, break it in, see how it does, replace the oil, and then, uh, you know, I'll give you my opinion of it. Um, just some specs on this before... We go any further this is 125 max working psi two horsepower and there's some of the other stuff um it does have an easy view oil level gauge on it it's glass we'll look at that once we get it all together okay so we got this all together um the only assembly you really do on these central pneumatic uh, at least this eight gallon air compressor is going to be putting on the handle which as you can see it's Two bolts on each side and they just simply you know this handle slides right into the slot and then you put the bolts in yeah pretty easy and then on the bottom we do have these little uh, bolts that go through uh, which are maybe from the back the bolts just go through there and then they just tighten on and in case you're wondering um, this does not come with any tools so you will have to supply your own tools it's just standard uh, this is an allen or if you find a similarly sized uh, flathead screwdriver slotted screwdriver you can use that to put it on just be careful you don't want to you know strip anything out these are chinesium screws and everything and then uh, the bolts on here this one side's already put together for you so you just need like a you know something to turn that and then on the inside um it's just a bolt with a little lock washer let's see can't get a better picture of that there you go lock washer on the inside and then you got your bolt and they are size 11 sixteenths. So um, what I did was just put my little ratchet on the outside. And then I had my crescent wrench on the inside. And, you know, who hasn't done that a million times? You just crank them down a little bit until they go flush. You don't want to over crank this and start mangling stuff. And, yes, the wheels are designed to have a little bit of, you know, play in them. They're not going to go super tight. Uh, and you don't want to over tighten this because that is solid plastic on that inside of that rubber wheel So you could end up cracking something if you over tighten this and then other than that There's there's not a whole lot going on here. The only other thing we had to put on was up here a little filter and then um, Besides that you just have to add oil to this before you start messing around and they did uh, pressurize this and test it you can tell because there's a little air pressure it's hard to hear, but when you pull that, you can hear. There we go. There was a little air pressure in there, and then there's a bottom release as well. Um, and furthermore, you got a little, this is actually pretty nice. Right here, that's going to be your oil level gauge. So I can see there's a tiny little bit of oil. It's that yellowish kind of tinted stuff down there. So they did run some oil through this and test it, so. I know Harbor Freight hasn't had the greatest track record. I have my ups and downs with them. Some of the stuff you buy there is just complete trash. And some of it's actually, you know, it's acceptable for your hobbyist or your person who's just doing some limited work with it. I mean, I myself prefer to buy American Made when I can. But in this case, you know, I'm going to be inflating a couple tires and maybe occasionally running a power air tool. Um, I don't even have any power air tools at this time, but... If I do in the future, I'll have something that can at least, you know, semi-competently do the job. This uh, particular line and, you know, specs of this particular um, air compressor, it's going to be for your people who are inflating tires, who are inflating basketballs, um, you know, just uh, stuff like that, using airbrush painters and... You could do nailing work with this, and I'm sure you could even use um, some other pneumatic tools. This would probably not work real well for, you know, refinishing cars or anything heavy-duty um, air pneumatic. Uh, you would definitely want a more comp you know, powerful engine compressor on there and a larger tank. Um, this one's right at the cusp. And I also did like on here, uh, this handle does work very nice. We can take a quick look at the gauges, too. The gauges actually look pretty good. I mean, um, they're just standard gauges, but compared to some of the uh, older ones I've seen some of my friends have, these actually look really nice. And here's our, uh, our gauges. We can turn that on to adjust our air pressure. 
there's our little connector and then here's the power cord of course and then on this side we got our little on off bar and importantly there's our oil drain plug and then let's flip her up real quick so I can show you on the bottom okay and then here's our little drain and one thing that I like it's not a screw valve like you'll see on some of those old ones um my father's got one that unscrews and I know those are like the gold standard but this thing is super easy it's just a turn and then and there you go you're uh you know you're draining I mean how much easier can that get? I, I wonder how well this is going to hold up. I think for the amount I'm truly going to use it, it's going to be fine. But I would say um, being on the shop floor, like this is in my garage, that might be an issue keeping that clean. Um, you know, I have to make sure nothing gets obstructed in there. As we can see, it's just, you know, a little valve. That's all it is. So... You'll probably want to make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. So, so the, the only real thing we have to do before we start is add our oil. And I will say, I've got some of the finishes on here. It's kind of what you expect from, you know, Harbor Freight Chinese quality. I mean, these are some ugly hands <laughs> on there. Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. But, I mean, look at that. Oh God, can you imagine? I mean, I, I get it, it's rough, you know, cast stuff and they're going for price here, not for quality, and it definitely shows. Uh, yeah, there's some ugly overspray on everything. The overall paint finish is, you know, not too bad on the shiny stuff, but holy crap on this cast stuff, man. Um, this guy must have had a little bit too much to drink that day at work or he came and hung over because he's got some ugly finish areas and I, I just think he was like, yep, screw it. Zip, 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 zip. But man, look at that. That is ugly. Another thing I noticed down here, we do have a little bit of you know, bending going on here, but really, how big a deal is that? Not much. I can't complain for something that's you know, costing me basically a hundred dollars. So I am going to add the oil in here and then we'll uh, pick it up with the uh, next one. Okay guys, we have filled the oil and per the manufacturer's directions, we're right there at the half point. A little bit high it looks, but that's fine. This is just oil that we're going to do the break in with. And if you don't know, the break-in is supposed to be 30 minutes. If you look in the quick setup guide, it's referenced, and they recommend you fill it with oil to the appropriate level, have this thing fully assembled, and then you open up all the regulators and valves, let it run for 30 minutes, and that's just to get this engine, you know, fully lubricated and, you know, make sure everything in there has all the lubrications working properly before you start putting pressure into it, which makes sense. And... Everything I've read online says, you know, it's a good idea. They tend to work a lot better after you give them that break in. So they also recommend putting in just an open adapter. As you can see, this is just standard adapter right here. This one's going to be just a quarter inch plug. And I put that in there and then we've opened this as far as we can. That's open. And then at the bottom, we also have our plug open. So we're going to turn it on and see how loud it is and we're going to let this thing run for 30 minutes and see what happens. I'll turn it on and let you guys hear how loud it is and then hopefully we don't trick a circuit break or anything. Um, I've heard these things are notorious for doing that if you're using too long a line. Um, like if you have something super far away from your electrical box, this thing draws quite a few amps apparently. So we'll see if we trip anything um, and then we'll go from there. All right guys, we're back. After 30 minutes of this uh, sitting with that open, we can see, uh, well, it's a little frothy in there. It looks like uh, no real oil got used. Uh, it might be frothy because I just uh, tipped it a little bit so I could get back to the bottom. Um, but I've already tightened all the valves on this again. I'm gonna release our little plug. 
Um, and, you know, this thing ran, there was air coming out of it, and I really didn't, you know, see anything unusual. There was no smoke, so I was happy about that, but it doesn't look like it really used uh, much oil, which is a good thing. This thing was chewing through oil. We'd have a problem. These tools do eventually use it, so it's not unusual, but, I mean, it might have dropped a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But that oil that's in there right now, it's just some cheap throwaway oil I bought. You do have to watch the oil you put in these things. It can be 5W30 and, you know, just straight 5W30. No, um, you know, anything else in there. No detergents, nothing fancy. So if you've got extra car oil or ATV oil, don't use it. It will tear apart the insides. I've read all types of horror stories about it eating through the caskets and everything in here. And it'll cause a whole bunch of other issues, including some of like that little window right there where we can view the oil. I've heard if you use the detergent oils, um, they slowly start to leak out of there and cause you all kinds of problems. Um, so make sure you're just using standard, you know, 30 weight oil. If you are going to be using that type of oil with no detergents, I bought to replace, uh, there's my little bottle of um, the standard, you know, oil that they give you. And then I bought just at Harbor Freight, a little thing of the Centrum Pneumatics, uh, you know, compressor oil. All the reviews online say it's good stuff and there's 32 fluid ounces in there. So I imagine <clears throat> we'll be able to get at least, you know, one to two uses out of that thing. So we will wait till this cools down. I'll give it 30 minutes or so. Um, and then we'll drain off this old oil and we'll go recycle it. And then we'll add in our new oil and we'll be all ready to go. I've heard that's the best way to break these things in. You know, just that first cycle through gets anything that's possibly in there contaminant wise out. We'll come back with the oil change in just a couple minutes. Okay, guys, we're back, and we're going to be draining off the oil. Um, I did let this cool down for a lot longer than I intended, so I'm not too worried about it, though. This is kind of a, you know, it's not a super viscous oil. It should flow pretty easily, but uh, I'm just going to kind of loosen this up here real quick, and then I'll show you some tricks and some tips. Oh, there she goes. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. Um... Now, one thing to know, as soon as we pull that bolt out, that oil is going to come out of there, and um, it's not a lot of oil, so it's not going to be like in a, you know, a car where it just goes bloop and comes flopping out. I imagine it's going to have a little stream, but it's probably going to stay pretty close, so I did kind of preemptively put a little paper towel down here, and what I'm going to do next is tilt her back towards the wall, and loosen this and since it's uh you know pretty much uh loose i think i can almost get it by hand we will then take it out and then rotate it back and i have a jar you know this is an old motor oil jug that i recently recycled some oil in and uh i'm going to it's empty right now except for some sludge at the bottom but that's fine <laughs> uh i'm going to use that to catch all the oil we'll be taking out of here now we want to leave the drain plug or sorry the uh you know cap for the filling in there and then the drain plug was the one we're going to take out first the reason being you know when we take this out we kind of want to have a little bit of pressure to keep it from flowing you know freely and then when we tilt it all the way back um, we let the oil drain out as much as possible and then uh, we'll take this out i'm sure you could do it at the same time but I don't know, you know, based on how far we're going to tip this this way, I don't want oil coming back out through the top and making a mess. So I kind of want to keep that, you know, in there until almost all the oil has been drained off. So I am going to loosen that nut right now as I tilt. Okay, so we got this tilted back now and I am loosening this. In case you're wondering, this is a three quarter inch uh, bolt that they got here. It's coming out pretty easy, but... It's so much easier when you only have one hand free to, you know, work with something to use a tool like this. And it gets it done fairly quickly. Alright. And I think she's just about out. Alright, here we go. Ooh, man, that's got a lot of material on that. It might be, it seems like, that's weird. It's like some type of glue or desiccant. They might have used uh, some type of thread locker. 
that's really strange. It's almost uh, like sandy. I mean, that's probably something to keep. You know, now that I think about it, it did say there was some desiccant type material in there. Another reason you do want to run the oil through here. So now we are going to tilt this uh, back this way and start draining off the oil. Okay, and now we're tilting back. And actually, something I noticed: if you have a wide mouth, uh, this is just a you know five quart jug. You can actually put this on here, and that way you kind of prevent anything from leaking out. You see, we got a little bit of that that schmooey oil coming out of there. And then instead of leaving it like this and letting it slowly dribble out of there, we're gonna take this and tilt it all the way on its side, and actually. Let gravity do all the work for us. So if we get this right, we'll actually be able to kind of prop it up like that. <laughs> You're not going to leave it like that. It could fall, but what we've done is kind of kind of cold today. And like I said, there we go. can't get a good angle in this, but it is slowly flowing out of there. There, you can kind of get a little bit of that brownish part right there. That's all the oil flowing out of there, and it's coming out a pretty good tick. I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. And then when we see the stream slow down, we'll uh, take the plug out to give it a little extra motivation. But until I see it really uh, start to slow down, let's see. And you know what? It's slowing down quite a bit. Uh, there wasn't much oil in here. I mean, we we put in maybe... I don't know, 8 to 12 ounces, something like that. So let's just take the plug out now so I can show you guys what's going to happen. And this thing's just an easy unscrew. It's kind of a gaudy little thing. You think they would have given you something metal, but this is just some cheap, you know, ABS style plastic. Um, I don't know how that's going to hold on and definitely don't want to over tighten this thing. I mean, it already doesn't have great workmanship. Look at how rough that is. That guy showed up to where he just completely plastered that day. He was working the molds. I mean, it's got a little O-ring right here, so I suppose it's fine. But things, uh, you know, you pay for quality. And I certainly did not pay for that here. Um, and then, oh, well, actually, uh, again, you can't really see that. But it is flown out a little bit heavier. So we'll let this run for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, see what happens. And then uh, when we come back, we're just going to... Flip her back up, fill her with some new oil, and we'll call it a day. All right, oil has been drained off. It's about time. This thing actually took probably closer to 20, 25 minutes to fully drain. And then as you can see, we've already added our oil in there, right back where we need to be. And the ground's not super level, so it does look like it's a little overfilled, but it looks like to me we're right on target. One thing I forgot to mention, this little opening right here, um, it doesn't really fit stand uh, funnels for, you know, like you would find in a car. Um, I actually pulled out a whole bunch of mine, and I'm like, okay, here's my filter, let's just slap her, and I'm like, oh, crap. I was like, that's too big. I was like, I wonder if my little, you know, speed filter will fit in there, or I keep saying filter, funnel. And I put her up there, and I was like, oh, jeez. And... Luckily, I have my real tiny step filter, and um, this thing does not really fit in there. It just kind of barely is, you know, the right constriction for that. So, um, you, you got to be, uh, you know, if you don't have a funnel that, <laughs> that fills in there, I would not recommend trying to just pour this in by hand. You will make a mess. Go slow. You do not want to overfill these uh, oil compressors. So... You know, you might want to get greedy and be like, you know, glug, 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 and just fill it up as quick as you can. But uh, that's definitely not the way to go. Um, just, you know, take your time, add a little bit, and it does take a little time for it to go from up here, trickle down in through here, and then fill up um, down here on your little gauge. Um, at the beginning, it seems like, man, I'm adding oil, nothing's happening. Then all of a sudden, it like creeped up to like there, and I was like, whoa, hold back. And, uh, yeah, just take your time. I mean, it's not a, you know, it's not a competition. I wish I would have measured out how much oil I went in here. My container has, you know, it's about a third of the way empty now. The 32 fluid ounce one. So, you know, what's that? About, uh, you know, 
10.3 ounces, something like that. So it's probably in the neighborhood of you know that amount each time. So we're going to put that plug back in. I pick up these funnels and put them back in my bench. And after that, I mean, that's it, guys. Um, my initial impressions, it's a decent little compressor. It's going to get the job done. It's going to do what I want. We're uh, putting this plug back in, and that's it for this. This was an unboxing and kind of a uh, assembly and then a uh, run-through of the break-in for these for people who um, might not know what the break-in period is or the process or you know how to fill the oil so it was just kind of you know uh, first look with a little unboxing building and then uh, you know the first impression of this all right guys we are back with uh, my air tool so I figured you know let's still test out this little you know telescoping tool um, it's really easy to work with and I imagine that expensive is only a couple bucks But it just pulls right out and then you just tighten this little You know grommet right here. It's compression fit. So and then uh, I don't have a ton of pressure in there right now It's just a couple pounds, um, but let's see if we can you know get this thing working and uh, let's see what it does Holy crap. See all that junk fly out? There's so much corrosion here from over the years Woo, Look at that stuff fly Oh man, I love this little tool. This is great for like getting cracks and crevices like that. Uh, from driving all the time. Yeah, let's go back here. Spray out those. Ooh. Got some dirt on our battery terminal. Yeah, that was pretty nice. We, uh, you know, I know it doesn't look clean. It's not supposed to. <laughs> we were just kind of playing around with this thing. I drive the highway uh, a couple days, you know, pretty much five days a week uh, for about an hour each way. So two hours every day I drive a freeway um, to get to where I normally work. And, yeah, I get a ton of dirt and grime from the road. And the winters here in northeast Ohio... There's just salt, and there's leaves, and there's rocks, and there's tar, and it's always under construction. So that's a good idea to you know, clean out that stuff when you can. And what better time than the present? Look at that. We cleaned out all those leaves. We got some of that loose debris that was sitting in here. That was fun. So, you know what? Let's actually make this wrap up of the pneumatic tool. So we've now officially plugged it in, used it for some function, and then you know tested that function, and it works really good. Uh, this thing gets up to pressure super quick. My God, I had an old oilless one that that thing. It seemed like I would turn it on and get up to a hundred pounds. You swear you were asking it to you know take your daughter to the prom and have her back by 10.30 without a mark on her. This thing, just super quick to jump up to full PSI. I mean, I set that thing to 100 and it went and then boop. And I was like, oh crap, something's wrong. I blew a fuse. I'm going to tell you guys, if you don't need to spend a lot of money on something professional grade, or if your guy just starting out and wants something to get you, a, you know, through a couple paychecks until you can afford something nicer, you can get one of those nice ones from Home Depot, Lowe's, or you know, whatever catalog you're going to order it from. Give those central pneumatics a look. They're actually competent machines. Not a lot of maintenance here. It'll, you know, if you're working in um, construction or any type of capacity where you're using this on a regular basis. I do believe they recommend you change the oil on a uh, monthly or uh, you know every you know like four you know four times a year, uh, depending on how much use this is getting um, for enthusiasts and you know hobbyists like me. It's a you know once a year project, but give them a look. They're well worth the you know hundred or hundred and fifty because I think they have a couple other sizes if you wanted a larger one on sale all the time. 
be forewarned that 20% off coupons almost always exclude air compressors. Um, I thought I was going to go in and grab this for like, you know, 80 bucks. And the guy's like, nope. He's like, read the fine print right here. You see this? That you can't even read at the very bottom. It's where it's written in, you know, like French or Portuguese or something. Uh, he's like, yep, that says compressor. And I was like, uh, huh, good eyesight. Um, okay, fair enough. 100 bucks, good investment. I highly recommend it, guys. So go out and get yourselves one and let you know, your cells have fun with it. And then if it doesn't work out for you, you need a bigger one or it wears out, by all means, buy a bigger one or buy a brand name one. Again, guys, M and Breno 5, and this was, you know, the last part, my final thoughts and use uh, for this uh, little central pneumatic air compressor. It is the eight gallon variety, and it operates at a max of 125 PSI. It's a two horsepower on there. And this is the oiled version. So thanks again for watching. Via con Dios, amigos.